Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today, I want to start a new topic within Kubernetes, and that is config map. And why would you use config map? Well, it's a way for you to define key value pairs, and then you can use those key value pairs when you're starting your um, pods to specify, you know, either environmental parameter, as we're going to see in this example. You can pass them as command line parameter to the container. Remember, when we have a container, um, we have a executable in that container, in that image that's going to be run to create the container. And so you might want to pass command line arguments to your executable. We haven't done that, but you can. You know, you just have a, it's a program, right? So, or application. So you could take command line arguments. The way we have done it is to read environmental variables. But once you have your key value pairs defined in Kubernetes, you can use them in all these different ways. And you can even use them to the configuration to put them in a file, which Kubernetes does for you, create a file system and put the configuration in a file. And therefore, your application can even read it out of a file. So there are three ways. So I... I'm not going to show creating my cluster. That's step one, but this is how I created my cluster. And I'm not going to show importing the image we're going to use. These are all things that I've done over and over, and it tends to make the video a bit longer since I'm showing you over and over. So just make sure that you have step one and step two completed. So now I'm going to clean up my screen. And so I have my cluster running, and um, we can do watch minus D, and then we can do kubectl, and we can see that all. That's the case that's running. OK. Um, you know what? Actually, we have to get our directory. So um, what we'll do is we'll make a directory. And we'll copy um, you know, recursively all the stuff that we need from our previous um, code. So we ended at ingress 5. So we're going to copy all that stuff um, so we can keep modifying. And then I'm going to change into that directory, config-map. OK. Let's clean up, and I'm going to start my VS code in this directory. So let's just rearrange things here a little bit and make it a little bit larger. So all this is, you know, just the norm. And then let's zoom in a bit, quite a bit, I guess. And so, yep, this OK directory. All right. So let's go back here and go take a look at the documentation. So we go to documentation on the Kubernetes website. And then we go into concepts. And then if you look here, there's configuration. And then you have configuration best practices. We're going to talk about that a little bit towards the end. But here is where I want to talk about config maps today. We'll talk a little bit about secrets later. OK. And so if you read it, you it says uh, config map is an API object, which just means an object you can create to choose the Kubernetes um, API service used to store non-confidential data in key value pairs. So you do not want to store like password or any sensitive information in config map. This is just purely like um, key value pairs for things that anyone can read essentially. No, there's some other things like you have to be in the same namespaces and all that stuff. And we didn't talk about namespaces, but don't worry about all that. Just know that oh, this is for non-confidential information, I think public information. Then it says pod can cons pods can consume config maps as environmental variables, command line argument, or as configuration files in a volume. And I mentioned this that our Kubernetes can create a volume or a file system and map it into your container where it would see the configuration you want to give it in that file. But the way we're going to use it is as environmental variables. We don't really care about command line arguments, and I'll talk a little bit about volumes later. It goes on to say a config map allows you to decouple environmental specific configuration from your container image so that all your application, so your application are easily portable. Meaning that if we don't have to store specific configuration like which database to use, blah, 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 in the image when we write the code or when we configure it, and we can do this at runtime, then yeah, we can move it from place to place. And so here the caution is just reminding you that all config maps do not provide secrecy or encryption. So basically, if you put some data there, um, you know, anyone can essentially use it. If you want to store credential or secrets, use Kubernetes secrets. All right. And then I talk about the motivation, which you can imagine. I just mentioned it, which is if your application is going to talk to a database or some other thing, or you want to pass some information on how it should behave, and you'll see that in our example, 
like configuration information or version number or something like that, then instead of hard coordinate, you can just use um, Kubernetes config map. And it tells you that a config map, um, so you can write part specs that refer to a config map and configures the containers in the pod based on the data in the config map. And the pod and the config map must be in the same namespace. This is what I referred to earlier, that though, well, you can't have um, a config map that's in one namespace and try to use it somewhere else. And again, just trust me with the, the namespace is just a way to restrict or group a set of things like you know pods and config map and all those things we've been creating. A namespace is used to sort of group them and we'll see how to create namespaces and how to use them later. And then it gives you an example. Uh, oh, it says that no, the spec of a static pod cannot refer to a config map or any other API object. And so we, we, we don't worry about static pod, so we, we're going to ignore that. But it shows you a simple example of what a config map looks like. But I'll say let's jump to our editor and create a config map. So let's get back here. And I'll do it here. I'll say let's create a file called config map or configuration rather. And say YAML file. And if I say config map, right, like this, you see my editor here allowed me to put in some code snippets. But you can see API version one. So we always have that with Kubernetes resources. We have the API version. We have kind. We have metadata. And of course, this config map, since it's it allows you to specify a set of key value pairs, then each config map should, will have its own name. Think of it as like a scope under which those key value pair lives. So I can call this like my application one, for example, or whatever name you want to give it to represent those set of configuration. So let's say I'm talking about, we have set of, for my application, there's several services, right, within my application. I'm thinking of application as just a, um, a set of um, microservices that are run together to implement something, okay? And so maybe I had a bigger application, I broke up into microservices, so that's still an application, right? So in the sense of what I'm talking about is not application is one thing. And so the configuration I need to give to these set of uh, microservices in my that makes up my application stack, well, I can consider that, you know, here the name for this config map. And then I could put key value pair. And so I'll leave it with my name for now. And then here we have the key value pairs. One thing to note is that we, we have these three common fields, API, kind, metadata. But what is different, we don't have spec, we have data instead, okay? And so anyway, um, and then on the data, you have the key value pair. And so let's just say that what I want is, let's just go back here to my service one, um, server one, and we're passing here an environmental variable named version with the value V001. So I want to switch this from using environmental variable here like this, where I art coded to a config map. So we'll get back to that. I just want to see what we're using. So let's just say that for service um, service one, the version, so this is the name of the key that I'm going to use here, and the value, let's just change it to v that's v0.0.3, let's see. And then I'm going to create another little key value that says service two, underscore version and it's 0 0.0.4, 0 .4, okay? Now, if I come back here now, that's all I really need to do. Um, I can reference this config map here. So if I go back here, this is the key I'm gonna set in my application. I need to get the value from somewhere. So instead of saying that this is the value, I'm gonna say value from. So this is how I'm gonna put it. So I want to say I want to get value from somewhere, okay? And in this case, if I do this and I look at all the possible ways I can get a value from, notice if I use config map reference, it selects a key of a config map that's in that config map, the name of the config map to reference, okay? Those two things, right? Because if I have the name of the config map 
and then the key, I can say which key within that named config map. For the config map represent, we need the name of that config map. And ours was called my app. That's what we decided to use. And then the key was SRV1 version 1. Okay. So essentially, what we're saying is I want to, my VS Code is very aggressive with the help, is I want to specify this environmental variable named version, which is what my application is going to be looking for. But I need to say what value I'm going to give to this environmental variable named version. Well, before I was hard coding the value, so it was just simply value and then given the value. But now I want to get the value from somewhere. So I'm going to say value from, and I'm saying here I'm getting it from the config map key reference, using a config map key reference. And then I just say which config map and which key. And so using these two pieces of information, that allows Kubernetes to go look in this config map and then read this key, get the value, and provide that value in the config map here as the value for this environmental variable. So let's see if that works. Now that we have everything configured, oh, I need this file to be in the K8S directory. It's sort of outside that directory, so there it is. And so now I can run um, my, well, before I run everything, let me do this. Let's do while. And so I'm going to be doing a curl on service one to try and read from that service. Now, I know the service doesn't exist, so I'm going to do control C here. And then let's do kubectl apply and then minus F, and I'm doing the KA test directory, and I run this. And then what we should see is, yep, um, I am getting a response back from that service that's telling me at all it's getting the value V03. Now, um, this is in contrast to if I do a curl on service two. If I clean up and do a curl on service two, we'll see it still says version V2, which makes sense because here, the value being passed for version is v um, 02 But now, remember, we can change this to read from the config map. So let's do that too. We can say value from, and then the key I want to look for is SRV2 underscore version. And we can double check that here. And there it is. And so now, this already, the config map already has this value. So the only thing that needs to change is that service two needs to, the deployment two needs to be updated. So maybe let's do a kubectl apply and see if um, we can get our deployment to be updated. And so service two was configured. And let's see, uh, it says configure. Um, this look like it stopped. So let me control C. I don't know why my while loops stopped, but let's rerun it again. And so there we go. Once I rerun it, there we go. And you can see it's reading that value that we pass in. So config maps are very, very, very easy to use. Um, and so highly recommend it because it centralizes your configuration. Deployment files and so on can reference the same keys, but we define them differently depending on where we're testing. If we're testing locally, we're testing in a cloud and that sort of thing. All right. In the example that we were using here in our configuration, you can see that we just have a key and a value. And these are single value, right? Like, but what if we actually wanted to use something that's more, let's say we want to have like test data, for example. I want test data to be like multiple line values, like a uh, set of, you know, like a, a comment or multiple words essentially, right? So in this example, I can say something like I need name, email, for example, and maybe, you know, test data, right? And so I have user one and then foo at email.com, for example, and then I have user two and then user two at, you know, goo at email.com. You get the idea, right? So it's multiple lines, but it's still key and value is just that the value now is in multiple lines. So notice this vertical bar, and you could make it be anything. This can be XML, JSON, whatever you want. Right here is just simple multiple lines of text. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show it how we can still inject this value into our container environment. 
And so what I'll do is I'll just use this guinea pig here, um, service two as my thing. And what I'm going to do is the same thing. I'm going to create yet another um, environmental variable. You know, it doesn't, you can create as many environmental variables or define as many environmental variables that you like. And so if we remember with YAML, when you see this dash, it's like an element. So we need another element, right? And so let's call it data, right? That's the name of the environmental variable we're going to look for in our container. And then again, value from, uh, you know, my sorry, my VS code is a little aggressive. I should find a way to turn that down. Config map, the name of the config map, and the key we're looking for in config map is test underscore data. So that's what I want to inject into my thing. And so let's rerun everything. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to apply. And so our config map should be updated and so too should our um, service. And so if we do kubectl get config map and then my data, we should see there are three values in there now. Okay, that's all dandy. What we can do, and for now I don't care about this, so I'm going to stop that actually. Um, what I'm going to do though is I want to go into that container so I can say kubectl and I can say exec, right? And then I can say minus it for interactive terminal. And then I can say um, I want to go into the pod for, um, you know, um, a service, blah, 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 two, right? And that's the only part that we have running. And then I can do dash dash, meaning that though anything coming after this is the command to run. And so I want to run the bash command. And so, oh, um, pod not found. Da -da -da. Let's see. Okay, I think, oh, okay. Um, hmm. Pods, let me see. Yeah, there we go. All right, so um, now I'm in that con um, you know service two pod, um, which you can see there. Let's clean up. And remember, we injected environmental variable called data. So if I type env command alone and press enter, we can see all the environmental variables that have been def defined or injected into this um, container. And so notice, here's the one that we call data. That's our information right there. Now, I didn't cover any of these other ones with, you know, the service name and so on, but, you know, those are injected too, in case within the container, you want to know which service is pointing to this container or anything like that. But that requires that the service gets started first before the container. But again, we didn't discuss that. What we want to, all we're interested in now is seeing that the data environmental variable is injected with a multi-line value. So now within our application, if I'd written my application to look for data, I would have that too. So again, just injecting values. And we should see version also. It's just an, another ver version is the other value that we've injected. So I said I want to keep this short. So that's all there is to it. It's, oh, last thing. I did say that though. I was going to mention how Kubernetes can inject a volume. And so here's an example of where you define a volume and you set out, you give it a name, config, and you say, oh, it's a config map volume. And of course you give the name for the thing that you want to inject. And then the set of items that you want to inject. And so if you specify now, how would that volume would be mounted inside your container, then you can go and find this file, this slash config file. At this location, you will see those keys or those values, the values for those keys injected into the file. So um, you could try that on your own, it works. So if you made it this far and you like what you see, consider giving this video a thumbs up, a like, like put a comment there. And um, if you'd like to see more content like this, definitely let me know. If you have problems, let me know. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. That I really appreciate that. And for those who have already subscribed, thank you very much. Take care. See you in the next video. Bye.